What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Lionel Jinx. I'm the creative director of the WW2K franchise. And with me once again... Hey, y'all. I am Christina DM Fam, art producer on WWE 2K22. And welcome to episode two of Ringside Report, brought to y'all by the teams at 2K and Visual Concepts. Now, if you missed the first episode of the Ringside Report with that sweet gameplay, click the link below this video to check it out. But in the meantime, we're here to provide regular updates and deep dives into the many areas and features of WWE 2K22. And of course, you'll hear from both Lionel and myself on a regular basis through the game's launch in March on game updates, DLC, patches, and more. And also, again, we're not doing this alone because we're bringing the homies from the dev team with Bring them us. Home. All right, so in one of our previous announcements, we ever so briefly called out the new MyGM mode, where you take on the role of a WWE general manager to prove whether you have what it takes to run the most successful brand in sports entertainment. So please join me in welcoming three folks who are instrumental in making MyGM a reality. Design director, Alan Flores, senior designer, Chris Macenis, and producer, Brian Fritz. Yo, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, I have my uh, my GM outfit on today. I suited up for this <laughs> Very fancy. Very yeah. fancy. Nice. <laughs> Except me, McMahon. <laughs> uh, so let's get right into it. We're going to roll the footage. To start off, who are the GMs and what does selecting one versus another mean for the player experience? So we let you choose um, a different starting point. You can choose your own GM or you can choose a, a brand that you want to manage. So having those different combinations of things can affect the way that your game is going to play throughout. So you can play as um, Adam Pierce, Sonya Deville, Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon, or a custom GM. You can play as Raw, SmackDown, NXT, or NXT UK. And it's really pretty interesting the way that those things combine because each one of those choices is going to give you a very powerful uh, power card that you can play throughout the course of the game. So like. For example, Adam Pierce will allow you to, he's got an instigator card. If you play that, then all of your rivalries will be increased by one level. Or if you play as uh, Sonya Deville, you'll be able to boost the morale of your entire roster. To me, the next part of the the mode is, is my favorite part, is selecting the draft, right? So selecting your superstars, but I always find trouble like, trying to you know select a balanced roster because I, I get you know my eyes get big whenever I see like those big names on the board that's still available and then I run out of money. So uh, I know there's a lot that goes into booking a balanced roster. And so can you talk more about that process and, and help me help me become a better GM? That's also my favorite part of the mode as well. Once you get into the draft, basically that's your first look at all the superstars. And what you're going to find is you're going to see a lot of different stats that are going to stand out to you. Um, you're going to see things like their class, their alignment, uh, their popularity, their stamina. Um, but what's really important to look at kind of early on is what their class is. So like there's giants, cruisers, specialists. And what you're gonna wanna do is like draft a kind of variety of different superstars that kind of go well together. And we do a good, we, we do a decent job of telling you like, oh, these are gonna be good matchups to help you along the way. But obviously you can you can draft whoever you want, um, make your dream roster. And speaking of dream roster, um, players, they can upload their own custom draft pool that include created superstars too. So they're gonna be able to go wild with that. Um, when, when they create their, their custom superstars, it will, will generate a cost for them. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, when you're drafting, something to also be very careful about is how much each person is uh, going to cost when you draft them. You have a budget when you go into it, and um, if you spend all your money after the draft, you might not have money to sign free agents, enhancement talent, legends. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with money, so you got to be very careful. I'm exactly like Lionel. I go in, I draft all the available superstars I can, and I go in with zero dollars <laughs> trying to set up this entire show. And I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh no. Uh, if you have the budget, you can have awesome matches in Hell in a Cell or TLC, but that was cost a little bit extra money to set up. So if you don't have the budget and you're stuck running one-on-one -on -one normal matches or tag team matches with you know, no awesome match types. Uh, with these show logistics, you can have that high school gym arena, or you can uh, move up into um, like concert halls and even these giant arenas that can give you bonuses, not only just to your show ratings, but also uh, if you achieve certain little uh, goals assigned to those things. We have a store where you can buy different power cards, where you can buy a lot of useful things like um, there's a health spa. So say I have a superstar that's feeling 
maybe I put him in five hell in a cells in a row. So he's a little bit injured or something like that. He's a little bit down. So they're like, all right, here's a here's a health spa. You go go there for a week and rest and then you boost some of your stamina, just take a little bit of a break. Um, but we also have a system of commissioner goals where basically Triple H will show up, will say, I want you to not put, say, don't put Drew McIntyre in a match this week. And if you do that, then you can earn a, a power card from him. And some of those are very powerful things that will boost your ratings, boost your superstars. It's really a lot of fun stuff in there. Yeah, see, I, I tend to be, you know, the guy who just follows the rules. But I know, Alan, you, you, you always play like the villain type of GM. Yeah, it's weird because, you know, I... I don't really consider myself a bad guy when I'm doing it. it. My superstars react that way. So basically what I do is I will book them in the hardest matches I can to really boost my ratings all the time. And they'll complain. They'll come to me in the dramas, go like, I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling injured. And then if I actually put them in another match, they become injured. Then they'll come to me like, what the heck are you doing? I'm injured. I knew this is going to happen. And then there's a tendency that, where they might want to leave. So I try and, you know, use some of the stuff to boost the morale a bit to get them to stay around, give them a little bit extra money so they can hang around and, and uh, help uh, fill out my brand still. So I want to get into once you actually build out your shows for the week, um, let's talk about some of the different variations of how you can view your show. Because there's the option to simulate an entire show. You can play these matches. But then also one of my favorites is that you can spectate as... Yeah, exactly. Exactly what Lionel's doing. You can spectate. I'm, I'm and <laughs> <laughs> Let's call out that spectate mode is exclusive to my GM. Uh, so, Chris, I want you to talk about uh, what this means for the player experience. Obviously, you can you can play your matches. Uh, we really wanted to make sure you were able to do that. Another really cool thing is, and I know, like, maybe you thought that you wouldn't be seeing your GM anytime in the ring but you're gonna be able to use your GM and interfere in matches as well. Whether that's one of the ones you picked or one of your created ones, uh, you finally get to see yourself in some action. But Christina, like you're mentioning, Spectate, you're gonna be able to do a really good job at basically being in the production truck and acting as if you were running the show from, from that side. It's really cool. It's something we haven't seen before. I don't I don't believe so. Um, you get to like change the cameras at will. Um, and basically how, how you think you should run the show, you finally get the chance to run the show that way. Try as you might, you know, you, I know you want to maybe cheese a five-star rating out of there. I know, I, I'm assuming that's <laughs> what probably what you would do. Um, but if you really want to get the highest ratings, you're going to have to really be good at your matchups because it's the viewers that are going to give you your ratings at the end of the day. Why y'all gonna pick on me though? <laughs> yeah, I feel like Chris is saying Lionel isn't great at building these matchups. So he's not gonna get the I, I think Chris, star rating. Chris is looking at my, my my stats and he's just seeing like, yeah, I never got out of the high school gym because I keep blowing my budget. You know, like I I I don't listen to you know I listen to Triple H all the time. So you know, like I'm just a rule follower, I guess, man. Brian, I do want you to go into what happens post match. Definitely. So regardless of whether you are playing, spectating, or simulating, uh, after you are completing your match card, uh, you go to a nice post-match breakdown screen, get a nice little uh, match report that you can click on for all of your matches to show you, like, well, when you went in this match, you can see that these styles didn't quite click. Or uh, it was, you know, people were hoping to see maybe a, a, a higher popularity superstar in the main event, and we're surprised to see this superstar in there. So there's a lot of really cool things that can really help out uh, for people like Lionel, who maybe just go in and do whatever the heck they Here want. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> just just going to keep piling it on, huh? See how it is. <laughs> Uh, and then we get a nice uh, breakdown screen that shows you um, exactly what you did that uh, impacted your revenue, that impacted your viewership. And as Alan alluded to earlier, there's also some uh, fun social media posts on the side when you get to these screens. I'll give you hints, but also giving you a little bit of flavor uh, going into your specific MyGM season. It's just cool having that kind of uh, flavor, that kind of personality to MyGM that kind of grows uh, as your season grows throughout the uh, 15, 25, or 50-week season. I'm glad you brought that up. But what can our fans come to expect when they actually play through a complete session? Well, I mean, the, the goal of the mode is to win, basically. So you decide if you're going to play against an AI GM or you can play against another person. You can play local co-op. Um, we've even figured out a way to do some local, some remote play via Steam remote play type of thing. So you can play a little bit of online play that way. So basically, your goal is to win. So throughout the course of the week, you're going to put on weekly shows. And you want to make those great. But you're building towards a pay-per-view every five weeks. So then there's real um, WWE pay-per-views. There's like Backlash and Extreme Rules with ending up with your WrestleMania at the end. 
So on your courses you're going through there, you're trying to build up money, unlock new arenas, get new logistics, get better crew, all that type of stuff, make your show bigger and bigger, make more money, and then go into WrestleMania with a bunch of killer rivalries, put on your best show, and then just go in and destroy your opponent. That's that's the goal. So you mean how, how I'm gonna destroy Chris the next time we play multiplayer? Cause you know, I mean, now that I got all the tips, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm out of the high school gym, putting SmackDown on you, Chris, done. Yeah, I don't know if you got all the tips. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, um, speaking of like going through the season, and Alan mentioned this a little bit earlier, he mentioned the word dramas. And basically what dramas are is basically you as a GM get to interact with either the commissioner, which is Triple H, or your superstars. And uh, they're going to be asking you for like promises or like rematches, or Triple H will be saying, you're doing this kind of poorly. And those are ways of getting tips as well. Like Triple H will tell you what you should be doing better. So I, I really hope you're paying attention to those line outs because they're, they're, you're going to probably need those along the way. I <laughs> don't need those, but I do want to make sure that I'm keeping my superstars happy. Um, that's something that you're going to have to also manage throughout the season is your superstars' happiness and their morale. Yeah, I think one of the things that I, I love that you guys have done was building in those tips that you talk about. Like even like when you talk about the draft, like that little hint at the bottom of like, hey, here's who we recommend you guys draft based on who you already drafted. And so like we hold your hand throughout the entire process, which to me, it makes it way less intimidating when jumping in to this brand new mode to our game. People want to draft their top guys, the guys that they like, which is great, you know, but it's like, well, maybe this person will match up a little bit better with that person, just so they understand it, as opposed to just going, I have these two top stars, what's going on? They're not getting the ratings that I want. It's like, well, you have two guys that are slowly plotting around each other and they're not putting on a good match, right? So that's what we're trying to help people uh, put on the best matches possible. That's, that's one point when you're talking about putting on those matches and pairing people up properly. They're at the very end when it shows you the match breakdown. Um, you'll get a certain amount of stars, obviously, but then there'll be comments like one and a half stars. Disappointing. And that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> Could have picked anywhere. Disappointing. I'm like, oh, man. But Christina, does oh, it man. does that hurt more than like the fans calling you out for having a terrible show? I, I get, man, that stuff, I, I get butt hurt. I'm just like, oh, it, yeah, definitely. you didn't like my oh, show. I mean, it just compiles at that point. So it's... <laughs> There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than being a SmackDown show and just seeing someone like, oh, Raw really did great this week. Oh, what happened yeah. SmackDown? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, we are just about out of time. So I got one final question. So you're pulling up my GM for the first time. Which GM are you picking? What brand are you running? And who's your first draft pick? Let's start with Lionel because there's been a lot of Smack talk. So oh, okay, we sm we smack <laughs> talk. So I'm gonna stick with SmackDown because I'm gonna lay the SmackDown on Chris and Alan. If you want to step in too, like we, I, I got, I got it all for you guys. Brian, we, we me and you are cool. <laughs> I, I ain't got nothing for you, man. Uh, and I, for my GM, I am choosing Adam Pierce for obvious reasons. We have a lot of things in common, <laughs> shiny domes. Uh, but yeah, uh, that that's my top two right there. Alan, no, 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 no. Wait, hold on, Chris. You've done the most smack talking today, so uh, you're next. No. I feel like I'm back and forth. I think it was equal. Um, well, man, he took my show. I was going to go smack down, but I don't Because you were talking all that mess. I, I got to go smack down. Smackdown. I was, I was, you know what? I'm going to go NXT UK, and I'm going to beat his smack down easy. Um, because, you, you know, you'll see. You'll see what their power card is, and then, then you'll be scared. Then you'll be scared. But for my GM... Uh, I'm going to go with Shane McMahon because we also have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna, that's going to be a battle for the ages. Just, don't worry. I'm fired, man. I'm going to practice my people's oh. eyebrow, man. I'm, I'm going to get that <laughs> down and whip that candy ass. <laughs> 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 All right, Alan, who you got? Um, I definitely have to go with Sonya Deville because she has a, a, her power card is basically she boosts the morale of the roster, which is very useful for when I'm you know, driving people to the ground, making them very upset. They come and complain to me like, she's going to take care of them, make sure that it's all good. So they're going to hang out, they're going to be okay. Um, then I would probably pick Rob because that allows you to basically mess with the other show and veto some of their superstars. Um, but then once again, when I'm doing my draft, I like to draft in pairs to look at guys that match up really well. So I'd probably go with um, Walter and Rey Mysterio because you have a big guy and a little guy. They're going to put on a great match, you know, and they're going to mix really well together. You got a good guy and a bad guy. It's going to work out well together. That was a very thoughtful answer. Yeah. A very, very thoughtful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, how about you? 
Uh, well, I'm going to go with probably the best GM you can pick, and that is me. I'm going to be the GM that I pick. Because, uh, like I said, we can have custom GMs. So I'm going to make my own character uh, through, community, through creations. You can even download them through community creations. Uh, I'm going to create myself. I'm going to put myself as the GM. Uh, I'm going to be, and even as a created GM, you still get an awesome power card. So I'll get the ability to uh, raise the popularity of my lowest popularity superstar by 20 right off the bat. So that's awesome. And that fits with what I want to do because I want to go to NXT where I get all my title, where I get a title match uh, that gets a bonus uh, to my ratings. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to draft John Cena. I'm going to put him with a bunch of maybe lower popularity up and coming superstars and have like a little David versus, versus Goliath thing, thing going on, you know? Uh, maybe a little John Cena versus Dexter Loomis or something, you know, for WrestleMania. I think we can make that happen. I think the fans want to see it. Nice. All right. I, I forgot. I forgot the, the, who was my first pick. I'm picking some enhancement talent, a free agent. I'm going to pick <laughs> the silence or whatever, whatever the, 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 the mime is. I'm, that's my guy. I mean, he's going to tear you up, Chris. Just Well, I'm going Roman Reigns, so you can acknowledge that. Okay. <laughs> It's gonna be right, like this the whole time. Right, just shutting you up. up. <laughs> so, Christina, right back at you. Who are you picking? All right. Well, initially, I was gonna go Stephanie McMahon, but I have this really fresh my GM suit on, so I'm gonna go with Brian's answer. That's I'm right. That's create right. Create myself. <laughs> I'm gonna run raw. And I'm gonna pick the EST Bianca Belair. What? And then I'm gonna go against Brian. Uh, ooh, there we go. <laughs> you do the Bianca taunt, like twirling your hair. <laughs> She's gonna rock that ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much to Alan, Brian, and Chris for joining us on today's Not episode. Chris. <laughs> That's great. I think. <laughs> We're going to try this again. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it for our time today. Thank you to Chris, Alan, and Brian for joining us on today's episode about my GM. And if you missed our kickoff episode about all things gameplay, click the link below to check it out. Thank you all for tuning in. We will talk to you again soon. And in the meantime, check us out on social media, WWE Games. Peace. Bye.